Right. Hello, welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is April 25th, and this is the EU US edition. Uh, today we have myself, Kevin Martins, and Mark Waite joining us. Uh, others uh, that join up will welcome as well. Uh, as well. Um, but for now, we'll go over the agenda and take things from there. Kevin, so, Kevin before yeah. we get too far into the agenda, could you double check your audio setup? I'm a little worried that I'm not hearing you as clearly as I've he heard you on past meetings. Uh, I might have been being quiet, Mark, if you can, okay. can you hear me better now or it's that there's more echo in the background that I'm accustomed to. So just double check that your mics you're using regular headphones. Yep. OK, go for it. No problem. Yeah. OK. Uh, so, yeah, so we have uh, for the agenda, we have the weekly release for this week, the next LTS release, uh, the blog post from Chris Stern about Google Summer of Code applications. Uh, I added in a section for recently merged and in-progress work being done for Jenkins.io. Uh, some notes on the version docs project that's been going on. Uh, updates for the contributor spotlight. Uh, the, an item that we've been discussing the last couple of weeks of documenting pipeline libraries is Markdown. Uh, some notes on CDCon 2024 and the Jenkins Awards. Uh, and something that we started discussing last week, the deprecation of Blue Ocean and what sort of documentation tasks that would involve. Uh, Mark, is there anything uh, else you want to cover on the agenda today, or does that cover? Oh, that's plenty. That is plenty and to spare. Okay. Uh, great. So then first up, so weekly 2.455 was built and delivered successfully this week. Changelog was updated accordingly. There was only one entry about removing ASM dependencies from core. Um, so nothing too wild there, but uh, everything went well this week and was delivered. So uh, good on that. Uh, next LTS release is going to be for 2.452.1, and that's expected to happen on May 15th next month. Uh, Alexander Brandes has volunteered to be the release lead, so thank you to Alex for that. Uh, the checklist has been made available. The link is here in the documentation as well for anyone who wants to check it out. Uh, and the release candidate is expected to be available on May 1st, so that'll be next Wednesday. And I've already started working on the change log and upgrade guide. Uh, I'm waiting on the release candidate and backporting ticket to make sure that uh, we have everything else covered. Uh, but I've been going through and making sure that there is no uh, duplicates or repeat entries, things that had been backported already to 440.3 um, and earlier. So that's looking good. Uh, and some, and there will be an upgrade guide for uh, at least one item this time around. So. Um, Looking forward to that. Everything is looking good now, and we'll have more in the next week or two. Uh, for the Google Summer of Code, so Chris Stern had uh, shared a blog post a couple of weeks ago, just letting everyone know uh, the status of the Google Summer of Code applications. Um, the grading period just finished up last week, so uh, that's now completed. Um, and Alyssa has just returned from time off to help uh, with the grading and wrapping things up before we submit our application to Google. Uh, Google announces their selections on May 1st, so again, next Wednesday. So we'll hear uh, more from them at that point in time. Um, I haven't had a chance to check in with Alyssa. Or, uh, Mark, do you know what, uh, have we submitted everything to Google as of yet, or are we still uh, planning on doing that in the next few days? I, I don't know. I'll have to check with Alyssa as well. Okay. So uh, yeah, so grading periods concluded. Thanks to everyone for all their participation, for their submissions, for the proposals, for all the work done. Um, it's really great to see, and we're really looking forward to Google Summer of Code this year. Uh, next up, so some recently merged and in-progress work. Um, so this is some uh, work that's been done on Jenkins.io. Uh, a lot of UI updates from Jan Faracek. So thanks to Jan for all of the work he's been doing. Um, so we've got things like a button update. So this is something in the UI that's been merged. Uh, we've updated the buttons to be a little bit more modernized and a little bit, uh, you know, fancier in that sense. But um, yeah, they're live, they're on the site, they work, everything looks good there. Um, Jan also uh, updated the download page with uh, updated icons for the different um, packages and uh, platforms, updated visuals for the overview and the different uh, links down here. So uh, lots of really nice UI modernization, thanks to Jan. Uh, Jan's also working on adding dark mode to Jenkins.io. So uh, this is not something that's been merged yet, um, but uh, something that uh, is really nice. Again, another way to modernize Jenkins.io. Uh, and I'm pretty positive mine is, yeah, so it's using my uh, computer settings to go off of 
uh, the theme here, adding dark mode to the documentation. Uh, so this is, this is fantastic. This is another nice feature that Jan's added. Uh, and so uh, just to point it out, but um, this is specifically for Jenkins.io, the uh, success stories, contributor spot, spotlight and plugin sites are different and a little bit separate. So um, some other work needs to be done to make sure it's across the board, but it looks really good uh, from the initial testing. Everything seems to be okay. There don't seem to be any issues. Everyone's having a pretty good experience. So um, yeah, again, thanks to Jan for all of his work on all of these things. Um, other smaller, uh, other, uh, less noticeable updates maybe, um, but still very important, updating the URL for the blog from node to actual blog, uh, removal of the Blue Ocean CSS and uh, removing the tooltip docs page. This was something that was actually out of date. So thanks especially to Jan for catching that and um, updating things accordingly on that end. Uh, and then, uh, John's not the only one that's been busy. Uh, Stefan Speaker has also been uh, working on a few things for the uh, Jenkins.io documentation. So um, getting the plugin dependency tab and encouraging plugin bomb use uh, was an item that was added just earlier this week. So thanks to Stefan for that. Uh, and then he also submitted a pull request to add a, a concept of a test pyramid to the Jenkins.io developer docs. Um, and this is great. This has been spawning a lot of conversation and discussion within the pull request itself with Uli Hafner and Basil Crow joining in the discussion, uh, helping get that in a better spot and make sure that it is useful for anyone going through the documentation. Uh, so thanks again to Stefan for all of that work. Greatly appreciated. Uh, and then finally on the uh, list of merged and in progress work, truly heard took some time to fix uh, links, broken links in the script console page. So very much appreciate it. Thank you very much to Julie for the work there and making sure that those links lead to something. Um, so lo lots of work being done recently in the Jenkins.io uh, repo. So, and thanks to everyone for all of their, their efforts. Um, next up on the agenda is the version docs project. So uh, ongoing work has, has uh, been uh, getting done by Chris Stern and Vandy Singh on making sure that the version doc site is looking good. They've been focusing on the Gatsby generation side of things for a little bit uh, as we get ready for um, moving towards a point where the infra team can pick this up and start moving it into production. Uh, they have other things on their plate they need to take care of, things like Azure uh, cost, cloud cost savings and other projects that they've got going on. But uh, the idea and the goal is that once that those are all taken care of and everything's under control, uh, we'll be able to refocus and put the version docs project back on their uh, their uh, uh, itinerary for work. So uh, looking forward to that. I'm still going through and reviewing the site in different areas, looking for any kind of uh, missed opportunities or blind spots that could be that could exist. Um, but everything looks really nice. Everything's uh, navigating and everything looks good there. Um, there's a couple issues that I've raised in the past, but uh, Chris and Vandy have both been really on top of those, which is fantastic. So thanks to them uh, for all their hard work on that. Uh, next up, uh, the Contributor Spotlight. So Mark Waits was published yesterday. Uh, thanks to Alyssa Tong for helping uh, send out a tweet and LinkedIn post for that. We got, um, and thanks to Mark, of course, for his work on helping out with collaborating and all of the work that he does for the Jenkins project. We wouldn't have a story if it weren't for all of that. Uh, I'm scheduled up next at this point in time. Uh, and I checked in with Alyssa yesterday to follow up and see uh, what other contributors we might be able to uh, check in with, reach out to, uh, find out if they are willing to collaborate and share their backstory. So uh, we're waiting to hear back from that. But the idea is that we'll be able to reach out to some other individuals that maybe weren't um, part of the first round of top contributors. And we're also expanding to look and see what other major contributions and what other work's been done uh, that maybe it's not necessarily a numbers thing, but a significance uh, aspect to it. So um, more to come on that. And uh, we'll have, and uh, hopefully we'll have some nice news in the coming weeks on additional contributors. Uh, so next up is the documenting pipeline libraries with Markdown um, or plain text. So uh, this was something that Marcus Winter had suggested and uh, created a pull request to suggest. Um, using HTML is not a good experience. The Markdown is a much better experience and usage of uh, documenting these library steps. So uh, 
everything is just a good sign and a good thing overall. Uh, Mark's done some work to convert his branch of pipeline library to use Markdown. He has had good experiences, confirmed that everything works well. Um, the only catch is that it's uh, not that easy. We would need to uh, include the Markdown formatter plugin in the Jenkins controller, which means that would need to be uh, installed on ci.jenkins.io, which means there needs to be some info work. So all that to say, Mark's created a help desk ticket for this. Um, security still needs to review and do uh, some checks there, but um, the process has started. We're getting, it's documented. Uh, the infra team is aware of it. It's been brought up in the infra team meetings. So they are, uh, it's on their radar. Uh, it's just not necessarily something they've picked up just yet, but uh, in due time. So um, more to come on that. Uh, there hasn't been any uh, forward progress as of right now, but again, more time will tell. Um, Mark, is there anything on that that I uh, forgot to mention or anything else that we should share? No, the it, it's it's largely paused right now because the we need to get the change merged into the into the code itself, and we don't have we don't have approval yet from the security team to go with it on ci.jenkins.io, and I don't I don't foresee when we will take their time to push for that. It's it's not a this is not a major improvement. This is not a great big thing. If if I'm really concerned about the caliber of that documentation that's being displayed, I can easily write the HTML directly, right? It's Markdown is just a convenience, not a not a mandatory. Um, I've written enough HTML that I can write HTML for this as well. It's sure. and it's not like many of the other things where documenting a plugin, lots of people document plugins. So being sure that that works in Markdown is really important. But pipeline libraries is a much, much smaller group of people. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate that clarification. Uh, so next up on the agenda, uh, CDCon 2024 just uh, took place last week in Seattle. Um, thanks to all the attendees, Mark and Basil were both there to represent Jenkins. So thanks to them for uh, going and being the face. Uh, and we also uh, posted a blog post to announce the Jenkins Community Award winners. So uh, to recap, uh, this Continuous Delivery Foundation has their own community awards. Jenkins is considered a graduated project. So we have our own three awards uh, in addition to that. Our awards are the most valuable Jenkins advocate. Jenkins contributor and a Jenkins security MVP. So uh, these people were nominated and uh, everyone voted in the community. So thanks to everyone that participated in that. And so the winners were announced at CDCon. Uh, and so the security MVP for Jenkins was Yanni uh, Nizri. The most valuable contributor was Stefan Speaker. The most valuable advocate was uh, awarded to Darren Pope. Uh, in addition to the Jenkins Awards, Alyssa Tarr won the award for CDF Continuous Enthusiasts. So uh, just amazing representation all around from the project. Um, some really fantastic individuals highlighted here and the work that they do is totally invaluable to Jenkins as a whole. Um, Yaniv is not necessarily a regular contributor, but he worked with the security team to help uh, identify some really uh, critical vulnerabilities that this, they were work, able to work together and resolve and um, just a huge, huge en endeavor for that. So thanks to Yanni for his work there. Uh, Stefan, as I had mentioned already, and uh, if you've seen his contributor spotlight, which is linked here, he's he's been uh, working in the project for a very uh, long time now. Invaluable work throughout the project. Um, it may not necessarily be even notice noticeable sometimes, but um, things like helping make sure there are zero open spot bugs issues is crucial. Um, there are various things that Stefan's worked on and done and submitted and contributed to the project that uh, help ensure the reliability, which is absolutely crucial to the users. Darren's helped I uh, advocate for Jenkins in so many ways, I don't even know where to start, but um, most importantly, he helps, uh, or he hosts the what's new in the LTS streams uh, the day after the LTS releases happen. He has made uh, countless tutorial videos. Uh, actually, it's over 300 uh, videos, but still, um, that's a lot more than I've made and I plan on making. So, and they cover all wide ranges of topics. They're available on the uh, CloudBees YouTube channel. We've incorporated them into the Jenkins documentation 
He's also helped uh, with the Improve a Plugin tutorial, which is uh, was a huge endeavor that was uh, published in the last couple of years, which um, has become a, a focal point for a lot of new users when they're entering into the project and when they want to contribute. So um, just so much great stuff there for Darren. Uh, and Alyssa is one of the most enthusiastic people about open source that I've come across since I've joined the project. Um, Alyssa is constantly going above and beyond to try and uh, support anyone in the open source community and the Jenkins project. Uh, she's constantly part of the CD Foundation meetings, outreach, and uh, the uh, officer of the advocacy and outreach and events uh, areas of Jenkins. So she's really got her, uh, she's deep in there and it's it's felt throughout the project and the community. And uh, yeah, so just congratulations to everyone. I'm going on a lot now, but uh, these are just a fantastic representatives of their project and they uh, absolutely deserve their flowers. So thanks again to all of them for all of their work and for uh, just being part of the project. Uh, and then the last item on the agenda that I had here was again, something that we started discussing last week but the eventual deprecation of Blue Ocean and what that means for documentation. Uh, so Bruno and I discussed last week, uh, potential things that we can look at, such as updating the status note at the top of every page that mentions Blue Ocean, uh, potentially replacing that documentation. Uh, and if there's not enough documentation to replace the Blue Ocean documentation, since there is uh, quite a few pages, uh, integrating it into the correct area and making sure that the blue ocean is not necessarily uh, front and center the same way it is now. Um, and so in that, uh, in that same vein, uh, with the move to the version doc site, it's going to default to the latest version of Jenkins. And if we don't include the blue ocean documentation in the latest version, uh, it won't default to having blue ocean. It will be out of sight, out of mind in that sense but it would still be available for someone who goes to an older version of the documentation. Someone who is still using 2.440.3 can go to it, get Blue Ocean documentation if they feel so inclined and go from there. Um, but it's not something that we can just uh, get rid of in that sense. And it's not something that's gonna happen for some time. Uh, larger enterprise users of Jenkins, of Cloudbees, of uh, this might still be using Blue Ocean. They would still uh, be using it. They may not be able to transition as quickly as smaller developers, smaller companies. So um, it's stuff that we have to take in stride and take our time with and make sure that we're not taking anything away from anyone that they still might need or use. Um, it's also uh, present in things like the tutorials. So the tutorials would need to be revamped as well. Make sure that any mentions of Blue Ocean are uh, updated to use something, uh, the pipeline graph viewer, or uh, if Blue Ocean is not the choice and we need to make sure that we're giving the correct instructions that still make sense for the tutorial so that people do not get lost while going through the steps. Um, so there's a lot to think about still. Um, and we'll be working with the intro team to determine what that might look like, the processes that are going to be happening. Um, we can talk to Tim Jacome as one of the maintainers of the Pipeline Graph View plugin to see uh, what documentation he might have, what we can potentially expand upon. Um, and yeah, uh, some of the Blue Ocean documentation will just not be applicable after the fact. So uh, what kind of things will we need to account for in that sense? Um, the Pipeline Graph View does not have as many views, for instance, as Blue Ocean. So uh, Blue Ocean has the activity view, the dashboard. Um, I forget what the other one is off the top of my head, but uh, Pipeline Graph View does not cover all those same things. So we're going to not need all of those things. So um, it'll be a nice change. And uh, it's it's going to be a better experience overall for newer users. Um, uh, veteran users may need to adapt and change over time. But um, yeah, getting started and going with Blue Ocean is not necessarily the most streamlined experience a user can have. So uh, using the pipeline graph view, uh, in addition to things like uh, the recent updates to the tutorials for using Docker Compose, these are things that are intended to make the experience better, be a, a bit easier for a user to you know, work with as well. Um, so we're moving in the right direction and we're getting things in order to be uh, just a, a better you know, hit the ground running experience for new users in Jenkins. 
Um, Mark, any thoughts, insights, ideas on the blue ocean deprecation or anything that we haven't discussed? Nope. I think we've we've got a lot of work of ahead of us to deprecate to prepare for the eventual deprecation of blue ocean. Let's keep planning. Great. Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna be a bit. So we have time. It's not um it's definitely not something that's gonna happen overnight. So yeah, no need to rush. Um and with where Blue Ocean is mentioned throughout the documentation. It's going to take a lot of combing through to make sure we cover everything. So, yeah, it'll definitely take some time and efforts, but we have that and uh, we'll get it done. So, yeah. Um, Mark, is there any other topics that you wanted to talk about or cover today? In, uh, no other. That's great, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. So then um, we've reached the end of the agenda. We still have some time, but I'll give one, everyone back some time in their day. Um, the recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours as usual. And uh, yeah, until next week, take care, stay safe, uh, and we'll see you then.